800 years ago, Calder and his friends are working as witch hunters, looking for the witch that has cursed their town with the Black Plague, which has killed dozens of families. When they make it to the center of the forest, they discover the witch queen is behind this and she kills the first soldier by summoning a swarm from his mouth. Then she brings up a few undead to attack them, and Calder immediately lights his sword on fire to keep them at bay. A fierce battle ensues and while his friends defend themselves from the evil creatures, Calder goes after the queen, only to find a toy on the ground that reminds him of his dead family. Calder realizes this isn't real, and when he snaps out of the illusion, he begins fighting the witch queen directly. The queen pushes him through a hole on the tree and traps him with her roots, but Calder lights the sword again and starts a huge fire. Then he stabs the queen to kill her, however as she dies, the queen curses Calder with immortality so that he'll forever live with his suffering loneliness. In modern day, Calder is still alive and working as a witch hunter. Currently he's on a plane and when he breathes against the window, he sees a symbol indicating the presence of magic. Using a pin on a glass of water as a compass, Calder finds the witch and gets rid of the person on the seat next to her by spilling the water on his lap. It turns out this witch is traveling with some ancient runes in her bag, and that's causing a storm that will make the plane crash soon. In fact the plane suddenly begins to shake, but Calder grabs the runes and deactivates them, making the storm instantly go away. Sometime later, Calder visits his dear friend the 36th Dolan, who works for the Axe and Cross organization like him. It's revealed that witches still exist and are allowed to live alongside humans as long as they don't use magic against them, Calder only intervenes when it's necessary to keep peace. The Dolan will be retiring soon after 50 years of service, so Calder gifts him an antique pen to commemorate the occasion. He also learns that his friends has already chosen the 37th Dolan, a young man that vows to watch out for Calder. Afterward, the 36th Dolan takes a cab to go home while the mysterious Belial watches from afar. The next day, Calder receives a call informing him that the 36th Dolan died in his sleep last night. Devastated by the news, Calder goes to watch the ceremony in which the young man is officially declared 37th Dolan with a burning mark on his arm. Then the two of them go to the dead Dolan's apartment to investigate the death. Calder uses the usual tricks to check for elemental magic, like the breath on the window and a lighter, but there aren't any signs. However when he's about to leave, he finds three dead insects and finds it suspicious. He uses a special powder on the floor and reveals a pentagram, which suddenly explodes and makes runes appear on the walls. This confirms the entire room has been cursed with the rare black magic and that his friend was murdered. When looking further, Calder discovers the pen is gone. He also finds a book with a bloody fingerprint and begins suspecting the new Dolan, but the guy reveals his burnt hands to prove his innocence. When he was a kid, some witches set his house on fire, and it had been Calder who saved him from it. Afterward, the duo goes to the local bakery and force their way into the kitchen, where people are cooking with creepy ingredients. The powerful witch Max is there selling illegal uppers and tries to escape with a cloud of butterflies when he hears them, but Calder blocks his way by capturing the butterflies in a jar. Max says he knows nothing about a user of dark magic, but after Calder insists with a threatening tone, Max explains he sold a forbidden herb to a stranger. Max is blind so he can't describe the guy, but he smelled the scent of arsenic and rotten apples on his body. This gives Calder the idea the killer is in a funeral parlor near an apple tree, so he sends the Dolan home for his safety and goes to investigate alone. Meanwhile a kid is shocked to find a trail of gummy bears on the streets and follows it to find a beautiful gummy tree near a bright house where Belial is watching. When the kid grabs the gummies, Calder stops him and reveals they are actually rotten apples. The house turns old and ugly, and when Calder enters to investigate, he finds a young scared girl. Calder approaches her only to discover she's a warlock in disguise called Elec. The warlock tries to attack Calder and stabs his hand before running away. Calder's wound quickly closes and goes after Ellis, throwing a knife to stuck him on a wall. After finding Dolan's gift pen, Calder knocks Elec out and takes him to the Council of Witches, where the 37th takes the chance to punch Elec for revenge. The council leader Glazer uses card reading to prove Elec is guilty, and she ignores Calder when he says Elec couldn't have been working alone considering the powerful spell he used. Glazer summons a terrifying creature known as the Sentinel and feeds Elec to it without hesitation. Then Calder notices a dead insect on Glazer's clothes, giving him an idea. He checks on the 36th Dolan's body and uses a carved candle to prove the presence of magic. Then he checks Dolan's neck and finds another insect that proves he isn't dead, he's actually been cursed by old school black magic. The only way to get rid of the curse is to kill the warlock that cast it. Since Elec is dead, this proves he was working for someone. Calder also notices a cut on Dolan's finger and goes to recheck the book, finding multiple bloody fingerprints left on purpose to form a message, remember your death. Since Calder doesn't remember his early life, he goes to a witch bar for help. His mere presence scares all the witches away except for the owner Chloe, who Calder asks for a memory spell. Chloe is hesitant to help a witch hunter because he hunts her kind, but she accepts when Calder explains it's for the sake of a friend. She proceeds to put a memory potion inside a cherry and when Calder eats it, he suddenly finds himself in the cursed woods, seeing his own charred corpse kneeling on the ground. However when he's about to see more, Belial shows up and pulls him out of the spell. When Calder suddenly finds himself chained to the floor. 
by breaking his fingers, he manages to get his hand through the cuffs and frees himself before going after Belial, triggering a fight. Unfortunately Calder is still under the effects of the spell and keeps seeing hallucinations, so he can't fight well. Belial uses the chance to set the bar on fire, leaving Chloe to bring Calder back from his trance. Calder thinks she's the queen and tries to kill her, but she blows a powder into his face and wakes him up just in time. Calder tries to catch Belial again, but Belial opens a root hole on the floor and disappears. Chloe tries to use a fire extinguisher to no avail and laments the loss of her bar because it's all she had, so she says Calder is a monster like everyone says. Later in the evening, Chloe hears a weird noise in her apartment and suddenly all the lights explode, allowing Roots to open another hole in the floor and drag her down to hell. Chloe tries to struggle free from their grasp and notices Calder's hand helping her, but at that moment she wakes up and finds herself in the cathedral. Calder and the 37th Dolan are researching Belial and Calder asks Chloe for help again, convincing her to collaborate to get revenge for her bar. Chloe accepts, but with her bar gone she needs ingredients for the potion, so she takes Calder to a friend's house. When they arrive there, Chloe is devastated to discover her friend has been murdered and all the important plants were stolen. At that moment she gets a call coming from her friend's phone, but it's Belial with a message threatening them with more attacks incoming. Since they don't have other choice, Calder goes to see the dangerous witch Danique, who accepts to lend them the plants. However while Chloe is distracted checking the plant, Calder suddenly begins seeing illusions of his family. It turns out Danique is a traitor and while her employees catch Chloe, Calder gets trapped in a memory spell. He enjoys seeing his family again but his happiness is interrupted by Chloe, who keeps talking and pushing until he wakes up. Back in reality, Calder finds himself being dragged away by Danique's men. He immediately knocks them all out and finds Chloe, freeing her before interrogating Danique. The witch swears she doesn't know Belial's intentions, she only got him the plants he needed. Calder decides to leave without punishing her, but Chloe takes revenge by stealing Danique's magical gem and destroying it, which reveals Danique's real hideous face. Afterward Calder has a chat with Chloe and confirms she's a dreamwalker, meaning she shouldn't need potions to get into someone's mind. Chloe confesses she's afraid of her ability because when she used it on her brother he died, so Calder takes her to a sacred place that shows the history of witches. After teaching her of her legacy, he reminds her he can't die and guides her through the process of seeing his mind. The duo revisits the Night of the Curse and finds Calder's charred body, which roared when his friends came closer. When the first Dolan tried to destroy the Queen's heart, Calder began screaming in pain, meaning they couldn't kill the Queen without killing Calder too. The heart was kept hidden, and Chloe realizes Belial killed 36th Dolan because he knew where the heart is and will use it to bring the Queen back. Meanwhile Belial kidnaps Max to take him to the old woods, where he puts it against a tree to sacrifice him to the Witch Queen as he summons it with the heart. Back to Calder, he goes to the cathedral and yells at the 37th Dolan because nobody in the organization ever told him they hid the heart. The young man responds the 36th Dolan had been considering destroying the heart to grant Calder his freedom. He also provides Calder's with the location of Belial's truck, which can be tracked. Moments later, Calder arrives at the woods and discovers Max has been possessed by the Witch Queen. Chloe suddenly appears behind him, but when Calder gets distracted, Belial drops the illusion and attacks Calder with fire magic followed by a few shots. However Calder's fast and quickly throws a knife to kill him. The Queen uses this distraction to stab Calder with a root and retrieve the immortality, explaining she hadn't gifted it to him, he has just been keeping it safe until she could regain her body. Max loses his shape and transforms into the Queen, who attacks Calder with a magic swarm, but when Calder responds with a shot, she disappears into the tree. Calder rushes back to the city and discovers the 36th Dolan has reawakened, however Calder isn't happy, he knows the Queen will cast a Black Plague curse and he can't do anything to stop her. The Dolan reminds Calder he already killed the Queen once and encourages him to try again. Determined to prove himself to his friend, Calder retrieves a legendary sword plus a bunch of runes to arm himself. Then he leaves with Chloe and the 37th Dolan to visit the council room, where the plague tree is kept away from evil hands. Glazer is found dead, confirming the queen is here to unleash the plague. They follow a secret corridor into the cave where the council kept the arrested witches, and Calder breaks a wall to release Elec's body, which is chanting away the plague spell. While Chloe enters Elec's mind, the sentinel shows up. It is met with fire from Calder and Dolan, but bullets do nothing. Calder is pushed away, but he quickly recovers and jumps on top of the sentinel to stab him with the sword and shoot right into its weak spot, making it explode. Meanwhile Chloe appears in Elec's mind and tries to stab him, but Elec jumps on her and pushes her down to kill her. After some struggling, Chloe manages to push back and throws Elec into the root hole, which instantly stops the chanting of the plague spell. While Chloe returns to reality, Calder goes after the queen, who creates the illusion of a post-apocalyptic world to fight Calder there. Because Calder is mortal now, every hit leaves a scar on him. After exchanging a few hits, Calder manages to stab the queen, but this only gets rid of the illusion. Back in reality, Calder uses a rune to light his sword on fire and knocks down the queen again, but when he is about to land the final blow, he's interrupted by the 37th Dolan, who shows up holding Chloe at gunpoint. It turns out he's a witch too, 
but he isn't capable of using magic, and the witches called her killed when he was a kid were his parents. The Dolan shoots called her and hands Chloe to the witch queen, who immediately uses her to start the chanting again and finally releases the plague all over the city. Dolan hopes he'll be granted magic as a reward, but the queen sees magicless people as useless and kills him with her swarm. Meanwhile an unconscious Calder begins dreaming about his family, who support him and motivate him to try again. Calder wakes up and uses the weather rune from the plane on the sword to activate a lightning effect. He proceeds to throw it at the queen, effectively killing her and gaining back immortality. As his wounds heal, the plague disappears from the city. The queen's body crumbles in ashes, but the heart is still beating. Calder wants to stab it, not caring about his own future, but Chloe stops him by explaining the world still needs him to keep fighting witches. She also promises she'll keep the heart safe and won't let him be alone again. Sometime later, Calder tells the 36th Dolan that he won't work for the organization anymore, then leaves with Chloe to find their next adventure. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.